Hey guys, it's the Friction here, Tag it Tank 1 2, however you call me, I don't really care. Welcome back to World of Tanks. Today we're playing the CS59. That is the Czech. Wait, no, that's the Polish tier 9 medium tank. And it is really a great tank if you consider all of the statistics. Now I have a really good crew on it, I have some great equipment on this vehicle. And all in all, I think my reload time is about 6.7 to 6.6 .6 seconds, which is really good. So DPM wise on this vehicle, is it's above 3000, 3300, I think. And yeah, um, this is one of the first few games after the patch 1.13. I really don't know <laughs> what is happening first or, you know, at the beginning of this match, I'm still kind of trying to get into the new rhythm of the game with the changes to the high explosive shells and also with the changes to the artillery. Also, I need to check on some vehicles that are actually um, different now, that have changed quite a few characteristics or that have, you know, been buffed or nerfed. Uh, I think most of the vehicles have been buffed. The M44 is one of the few tanks that actually has been nerfed with patch 1.13, I think, or maybe even the patch before. So yeah, the CS-59, it's a great tank, I think it's my, it's probably in the category of one of the best tier 9 medium tanks for me. Um, I noticed that tier 9 is really the best tier to play, um, especially medium tank wise. If you want to play tier 9, there are so many good options out there, there's the T-54 that immediately jumps to my head, there is this, the CS-59. There's the Batchat 25T AP, then obviously you have the M46 Patton, which is also really, really good. But either way, I don't really think you can go wrong with uh, tier 9 medium tanks. Maybe if you don't like sluggish or more heavily armored uh, medium tanks, like the E50, well, maybe that's not a vehicle for you, but the E50 itself is a great tank. Like... That's the first time where you actually get armor on a medium tank in the German tech tree and it really is a lot of fun. You can ram things all of a sudden and, you know, they just get annihilated. So, yeah, speaking of the devil, there's an E50M, the tier 10 counterpart, which I just don't think is as good as the tier 9. But we're trying to hold this um, alleyway or this, you know, this ridge line right here. And uh, there's a T-54 as well, a lightweight, and we have a RU-251 who was spotting for us. Did you see the FV-4005? He was just knocked out by a single shot from the enemy FV-4005. This corner is actually going to be a very important part of uh, this gameplay because we have to hold this corner to be able to hold this position, to, uh, to hold the plateau at H7 and H8. But it's not always easy, but if you have a CS-59, a tank like this that combines 10 degrees of gun depression, really, really good rate of fire, maybe not the best armor, but I'd say very, very good mobility as well. You have like quite a few good elements in there with a gun that is quite punchy and uh, it has 252 millimeters of pen. So we should be able to deal with anything that comes around here. What I want to do right now is I want to support this RU-251, so I do move around here to get the Object 140. Unfortunately, the RU-251 dies, the T-30 fires, and because of our great rate of fire, we can just move out again and hit that T-30 where it hurts. So right now, what I don't want to happen is I don't want to get caught out at the front where the T-62 might be able to just perma-track me. So I'm a bit aggressive right here, and that's exactly what ends up happening. The T-30 is firing high explosive, and that high explosive actually did quite a lot of damage to me. 527 HP. So that's not very good for me. I have to get out of this position. Luckily, I only get tracked without getting any or receiving any damage, but artillery is getting into the fray as well. So it's really important that this SU-130PM and me, that we can hold this corner. But I think, you know, I feel... At least I always felt comfortable playing the CS-59. I know that we need to kill this T-30. If he fires, he's going to be reloading for quite a long time. The thing is, if the SU-130PM moves forward, he's probably going to get one shot at if the T-30 is still running high explosive shells. Um, on my side, I probably would survive. I don't have the best frontal armor, but I think 
I have about a hundred and I'm not sure if it's a hundred millimeters or a hundred and twenty. Uh, maybe I'm also overcompensating. It could be less, but I don't think that the armor on this vehicle is particularly bad on the hull. I think on the turret it's not as good, but on the hull you actually have quite decent armor. So either way, we're trying to bait this T30 right here. Um, we do put one into him. He hits us with a high explosive shell. He must have hit a part of our armor that's quite heavily um, armored. Could be our lower plate. We miss the T30, but it gives the M5355 the opportunity to, you know, get a real nice kill. So this game is not won yet. Uh, we have two tanks advantage at the moment. Um, they have a couple of vehicles still on the zero line, three of them, two tank destroyers and a T-54 lightweight. And if they play it correctly, they can actually still be a big threat to us. Luckily for us though, this Conway is kind of being perma spotted or perma lit and we managed to take him out of the game, which gives us a total damage um, tally of about 4,268 with the spotting damage. The big problem is just that we know that there's a FV somewhere in the back there is a T-54 lightweight, and with my HP, I cannot really push any more. So I really need this M-53-55 to not be as aggressive, but he's trying to spot for us. So unfortunately for us, uh, he will not make it, and the T-54 lightweight over there is definitely a tank that can be hidden quite well. So what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to maneuver into the middle of the park to see if I can help out the Byzante and the Burask with the object 704. Now it's a quite a, a risky move to be fair because I do get spotted. This FV can easily take care of us. There's also a RDP somewhere on the map um, and our M5355 unfortunately does die. Now luckily for us we know where there's two tanks, we know where the other two are and we do take out the artillery and now it's just a game of who gets to who first, who spots who first. So. I got spotted probably by the FE and we have a bit of an issue because I need to focus, I need to know do I help the Spizonte and the Burask with the Object 704 or do I go for the FV and the T-54 Lightweight. We just lost the SC-130 PM and we just lost the Burask and this game has gotten interesting all of a sudden. Now obviously my way of thinking right now is I need to close the distance to the FV and I need to see if I can flank around. And luckily for me, I do spot the FV and he's on low HP. We finish him off, but we do get spotted. That's quite a, a bit of a dangerous thing because in this ditch, you are able to get hit from that position over there. And I just been hit by the T-54 lightweight. That's the last thing that I want to happen. So I'm waiting for the SU-130 PM or, or the ISU-130 to assist me over here so that we can take care of this T-54 lightweight. Now, that means I have to rely on the Bizonte C45. He needs to take care of the Object 704. Luckily, he does, and we managed to turn this very close game around and win in the last couple of minutes. This was a very good game. This was also a game that didn't end immediately, but um, it just shows you like how capable this machine can actually be if you have the right equipment. Everything I noticed on this CS59 is that Every game you play, it's really difficult to get victories with the CS59, at least for me. I play well, like I mostly do get my damage tally of above 2,500, 600 or maybe 3k. The thing is just, I still keep on losing with this tank. It's extremely difficult for me to win in the CS59. Like I played seven games um, last week in the CS59 and I lost about six of them. And it wasn't just me, it was a team. We completely collapsed in the first four minutes and I couldn't do anything, right? So the CS59, I don't know, it's quite an interesting vehicle for me. I really like it. I really think it's one of the, the best medium tanks I've played in quite a while, probably since the Type 50, uh, Type 69, uh, no, Type 61, excuse me, the Japanese, the Japanese um, tier nine medium tank. And I've really had a lot of fun. This just shows me that tier 9 really is the best tier in the game because you're able to do so much with vehicles that are just really well balanced. Um, at least in my opinion, they are really good in the game. And um, yeah, it's been a joy to play the CS59 again. Hopefully I get the CS63 soon, the tier 10 
counterpart, but I'm not sure if the CS63 is going to be as good as this thing is right now. So, as always, I hope you guys did enjoy. Have a good one. Comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next video.